to be joint heirs with Christ to be with him for all eternity to literally behold his face to see him as he is not as a baby in a manger not as a man but literally in his glory like the apostles Peter, James and John had the privilege to see on the Mount of Transfiguration when they saw him in his glory and the garment was white as anything could be white in the earth and he saw not only him but he heard your voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son whom I well please they had the privilege Lord God to be not only in his presence but be in your presence Lord God and to be able to see Elijah Moses communing with him strengthening him fellowship with him because of what he had to go through for the world to literally suffer, die, taste hell in the grave so that we will never know what death, hell, and the grave tastes like. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We bless your name tonight. We thank you for another opportunity to hear from you, to hear your words, not our words, but your words. Everything we know about you, Lord God, you have given to us through your prophets and through your son Jesus Christ and through your apostles. Everything that we know about you is recorded in the Holy Scripture, which we here in America call the Bible. So Lord God, we know we're going to be hearing from you tonight because everything that you're going to reveal to us is going to come through the Holy Scripture, what we call the Bible. Speak to us tonight. Share with us what you would have us to know about you tonight. Father, we love you, we praise you, we worship you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Praise the Lord, 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 praise God, praise God. Now, if you have your Bibles, uh, you know, um, maybe somebody's logging on maybe for the first time. Um, you're going to have to have a Bible. Um, if you're looking on your tablet or your iPhone or your iPad um, and you don't have two electronic devices, um, the only thing I know that you can do is get a hard copy. I know you probably got a hard copy in your home somewhere. Get a hard copy so that we can search the scriptures for ourselves so that you can know that the things that the Lord is speaking in and through me is not really from me. I'm just his mouthpiece. I'm just a vessel he's using to speak to us tonight uh, so that he can share with us uh, what's in his heart, what he wants us to know uh, tonight to prepare us for the things uh, that are coming. So if you don't have a Bible, real quick, like, go get you uh, a Bible. Praise God, praise God. And once you get it, uh, I want you to turn real quick, like, to Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. Exodus, Old Testament chapter 12, verse 12. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. And, you know, the Bible tell us now, you know, and a, and a lot of times when, when um, I, don't, I don't know, when we, when we read scripture, we really don't take it at face value, okay? But we have to take it at face value. If we're going to take anything at face value, one thing we need to always take at face value is God's holy word, amen? Because that's the only truth, you know, that's in all creation, you know, God's word and what he says, you know, everything else is, is a lie, Amen. So when we read the scriptures, we need to really take it at face value. We don't need to add anything to it. We don't need to take anything away from it. We need to receive it just as God has revealed it to us. And God has revealed to us in scripture. Most of us that got enough scripture in us know that the Bible says that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against mankind. We're not fighting against animal kind, okay? We're not fighting against anything that's in the world that's a flush and a blood. But the Bible said we're fighting against principalities. We're fighting against powers. We're literally fighting, the Bible say, against spiritual wickedness that are in high places. Amen. But we know because scripture has revealed to us that not only can they dwell, can they operate in high places. We know that these spiritual wickedness, these fallen angels, the devils, 
uh, army. We know they can come, they can go up and down. They can go up and down, okay? Uh, and I give you a perfect scripture to confirm that. Uh, in the book of Job, the first chapter, the Bible said that God, all God's sons, they came and they met around God's throne. And I know that was the Sabbath because God said the Sabbath is going to be forever. So it's always going to be one day that all of God's children have to get together and sit at his feet. And as they were sitting there, the, uh, God looked out and he saw the Satan among them. Okay. Because God created him as one of his sons too. And then God asked him, what was he doing? And he said, you know, I've been walking to and fro upon the earth. <laughs> So that means that he had left earth <laughs> and he had descended back into the heavens, okay? He had left earth because that's what he said he was. When God asked me a question, he had to come in just like all the rest of them, whether they're good or evil, they had to come in on the Sabbath and they were sitting there and he said he had been walking to and forth upon the face of the earth. But it was the Sabbath and he had to go back to heaven because uh, God had commanded them to keep the Sabbath just like he's commanded us to keep the Sabbath. And he was in God's presence and, and, and God asked him what he was doing. He said he's been in the earth walking to and fro. So that's confirmation that the devil and his angels, they can go up and down. They can go up and down, okay? So that's who we're really fighting against, okay? We're not fighting against each other. Um, it's really a spiritual warfare. It's really a warfare uh, between light and darkness, between God and Satan, between good and evil. That's what the battle is really about, Okay? And, and we're just pawns, really. We're just pawns, okay? We're just participants. That's a better word. We're just participants in this battle. Let me, let me strike pawns, okay? Because we, we are alive, okay? We participate in this battle. And we participate in this battle whether we want to or not. We participate in this battle against light and dark, against God and Satan, the devil and Jesus. We participate in this battle whether we want to or not, whether we believe it or not. Every human being that's born on this earth is a participant in this battle, okay? And since we are participant in this battle, that means that we have to be on one team or the other. We have to be on one team or the other. There ain't no in-between. There ain't no uh, a team that's not, that we can get on that's not part of this battle. No, we have to be on one team or the other. We have to be on God's team or we have to be on the devil's team. That's the way it is for real, okay? And since we're participant, we have two choices. We can participate and be on God's team. We can participate and be on the devil's team. To not participate really is to be on the devil's team, okay? To not believe that we're in a spiritual warfare between good and evil, between light and darkness. Uh, that means that we're actually on the devil's team and we don't even know it. And what's going on in the earth is that just like God through his spirit is in all of us that he is called to be his sons and daughters. Uh, and he is working in and through us to, to do his will and for his purpose, uh, to save people, to love on people, to help people, um, to testify as to who he is and who his son is to people. He lives in us. And just like God lives in us and keeps us strong and make us do what's right. Uh, the devil also lives in people too. Everybody that God is not really reigning and living in, those people literally, whether they know it or not, they are literally uh, children of the devil, like the Bible say, okay? Because you have to have one or the other. You have to be on one team or the other. And I know that for a fact because before God revealed his son in me, before I received God's son, Jesus Christ, uh, I knew I was on the devil's team. I mean, before I really even knew God for real, I knew I was on the devil team, okay? Because of the things that I was doing and the life that I was living. So I know the devil is real because I didn't, God didn't reveal his son in me until I was almost 30 years old. And so from the time I came out of my mother's womb until I was almost 30, I know the power of Satan. I know he's real because he was in me. And I remember all of the terrible things that I used to do. Some of those terrible things that I used to do, I didn't even want to do, but I have no power to stop doing them, okay? So I know that either you on God's team or you on the devil's team. That's the way it is. And since we're not fighting against flesh and blood, you know, it's a fight against uh, God and his son, Jesus Christ, and the devil and all of, you know, those angels that, that's with him, then the real battle is not against it's not about men. It's not about flesh and blood. It's not about us. The real battle 
is about God's fighting. God's are battling. We know there's only one uh, 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 God. That's God the Father. We know there's only one uh, Lord Jesus Christ, his son, okay? But there are many gods, little g. There are many gods, okay? Everybody, every angel that God made through Jesus Christ, his son, they are angels, they are spirits, and they, they, they are the sons of God, okay? And we know there was a rebellion in heaven with Satan. Uh, and not only did he rebel, but he was able to convince a lot of other of his brothers to rebel and sin against God and his son, Jesus Christ, too. And since that day, the battle has been waging. And so that's the battle that we're participating in, whether we want to know it or not. So go to your Bible real quick, like Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, Exodus 12 and 12, Exodus 12 and 12, Exodus 12 and 12. This is what God speaks to Exodus 12 and 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite or kill all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men not just the firstborn of men, but he said both men and beasts. So that night, God, he was going to pass through Egypt and he's going to kill all of the firstborn, firstborn of man and firstborn of beast. Now, now listen to this now. God said he's going to do that. He's going to kill flesh and blood. He's going to kill mankind. But when we read the next part, we can get a glimpse as to what this battle, this spiritual battle is really about. It's really not about us. It's about God and his sons, the angels, okay? Then he said, and against all the gods, not humankind, but he said, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And so when God sent the death angel, uh, through the land of Egypt, and we know the story. Uh, everybody that didn't have the the blood on the doorpost uh, when that death angel went through every house in the land of Egypt, the firstborn of humankind and the firstborn of animal kind died that night. The angels, uh, you know, was who God was executing judgment on because it wasn't really the men, okay, the people that was in Egypt that was doing the evil. It was the devils of the gods that was inside of those people that were doing the evil and sinning against God. And so God said he executed judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. Now, go real quick like to Exodus chapter seven, verse one. Exodus chapter seven, verse one. So when God went through Egypt, all those people died, but he wasn't executing judgment against mankind back then, okay? He was executing judgment against his sons, the angels, but they were literally inside of men and women, boys and girls. Exodus 7, 1. Exodus 7, 1 says this, the Lord said unto Moses, okay? I have made thee. Now listen to what God said. He said to Moses, that was the one God was going to use to execute judgment. Like I tell you all the time, you know, you know, uh, the devil, in order for him to, you know, to operate and to do something in the earth, uh, he has to really operate in and through people. Okay. And, and, and God is basically the same way, you know, uh, because he's given the earth to the sons of men. He said the heavens, the heavens belongs to him, but he's given the earth to the sons of men. And since he's given the earth, the whole earth and everything on it to man to be in charge of. So everything that happens, everything that he wants to happen, it has to go through men. And so he chose Moses to work in and through him to execute judgment upon the gods, not mankind, but God used Moses to ex execute judgment upon the gods, his son, the angels that were in Egypt. And he said to uh, Moses, I have made thee a what? A God. A small G, not a big G. I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet, or the one 
that you tell, I'm going to tell you, and then you let Aaron tell Pharaoh or whoever uh, that need the message that I'm giving you. Because Moses, you know, he was the good speaker. After 40 years, God has stripped him of all of his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and humbled him. And so he had to, when God revealed something to him, he had to reveal it to Aaron and Aaron got the message out. Aaron got the message out. So God said that he's going to make uh, Moses like a God to Pharaoh. And the reason why, when God when God said that he was going to make Moses a God to Pharaoh, he was that he was going to really give Moses power, literally. He was going to give Moses power, not just over flesh and blood, but he was going to give Moses power over God's. Or over angels, his sons, the one that has fallen, the one that had been working in and through uh, the people in Egypt, okay, uh, to do evil and to persecute and to kill and to assassinate and to uh, uh, torture God's chosen people, okay, because that's what they were doing. That's why the Egyptian cried out, as you were, the, the Israelites cried out, and God finally heard them, and so. God said that in order for me to execute judgment upon the gods that's causing all these people to do evil, I'm going to have to give Moses power over not just flesh and blood, but even gods. Y'all stay with me. God's going to make it a lot plainer. Now, in order for Moses to deliver God's people out of Egypt, God had to give him power over the gods, those little fallen, the devil and his angels, evil angels working through men for the people to believe the word of God, he was going to speak through Moses. Now, and this is very critical. This is very important. This is very, very important. Um, everything is, is, is always about the word. Everything from the beginning to the end is always about the truth. It's always about the truth. Okay. It's always about the truth. All right. Because the devil is a, is a lie. He's a father. He told the first lie. And since that first lie, he deceived Eve with, you know, the, the world, you know, from beginning to this day is just been saturated with lies. That's why God's a liar and gonna tear in this sight. You know, that's why he said it, every liar is gonna end up in the lake that's burned with fire. Because that's how everything started, you know, with a lie. With a lie. Okay? And 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 God is 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 trying to uh uh reveal truth because the devil has used lies uh to deceive Eve. And he used lies to deceive the people in Egypt and he's been using lies to deceive people from the garden to this very day. And right now he's using lies to deceive us, to deceive the whole world to this day. He's using lies. And so in order uh, for, 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 for God to, to, to bring people back to him and to be just, God has to reveal truth to them. God has to reveal truth to them. You remember uh, the one command, the one and only command God gave Adam and Eve was this. You can eat from every tree of this garden. Every tree. It's good for meat. Okay? It'll sustain you. You have nutrients. You have everything that you need. Okay? He said, but it's just one tree that you can't eat from. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the only tree that you can't eat from. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And once they partook of that tree, all of a sudden their eyes were open after the devil had deceived them through a lie. And when their eyes were open, the Bible said they became like gods. <laughs> they knew uh, uh, they knew the difference between good and evil. Okay, they knew the difference between good and evil. Now, so when you when when you when you when you first of all they had. Sin against God when he broke that first commandment, just one commandment. You know, he gave us 10, but he gave them one and they couldn't keep it. OK. And so when they when they broke that first commandment and he had already told the day that you, you know, if you do, you're going to die. You, the day that you, that mean not die instantly, but you're going to death. The spirit of death, the spirit of death was going to be birthed in the earth. Death is a spirit. OK, because that's the last enemy to be defeated. Death, not the devil, <laughs> not Satan, not the beast. <laughs> <laughs> not the dragon, but death is the last enemy to be defeated, okay? And when they bit from that uh, 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 that tree of knowledge of good and evil, death, the spirit of death was birthed in the earth. And the spirit of death has been in the earth ever since that day, okay? And now, because man uh, has become like God, they know good, they know right and wrong, good and evil, okay? 
The problem with it is this. This is the problem. The problem with, 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 with man knowing both good and evil, because at the, once they did that, then they begin to have a choice. Okay? They begin to have a choice to choose good or to choose evil, to choose doing right or to choose doing wrong. And the devil knew once he deceived them to partake of that tree, he knew exactly what was going to happen in mankind, that they was going to have a choice to choose good or to choose evil. And he knew exactly what he was going to do. He knew. That's why he deceived them. Okay. He wanted the eyes to be open. All right. Because God had given to earth to them, okay? And if you all remember, uh, in the beginning, you know, the Bible says that, you know, there was a time when the sons of God came down and they behold the, the, the daughters of men and they were beautiful and they married them and they went into those women and, and they went into those women and they had children. They were like, I don't know, uh, demigods. It was partly human and partly gods, you know, and, and the devil was uh, had already, you know, uh, got into mankind and made them com commit so much evil, you know, because they knew good from evil. He knew that he was going to, that, that angels are able to get inside of humankind, to get inside of human beings. Okay. And, 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 and he had lost a lot of authority, uh, in heaven. And now he wanted, uh, cause that's the dwelling place that God had prepared for them. And the Bible said they left their habitation. They came down and they did that evil thing. And angels don't supposed to marry nor give in marriage according to the Bible. That means they don't supposed to have sex, period. Sex, period. That's what marriage is in the eyes of God. Scripture, whenever you have sex with somebody in the eyes of God, that's marriage. The two become one flesh. Ain't got nothing, ain't got nothing to do with a paper. We need that because that's the law of the land, okay? But marriage in the eyes of God is whenever a man and a woman join together and have sex. In the eyes of God, that's marriage. The two become one flesh. One flesh. And so, and so now the devil is trying to not only... Uh, take over the heaven, but he's trying to take over the earth too. And so he's deceived man. And now man, you know, they can got choices now. They can choose between good and evil because they know good and evil. And he know he was going to get inside of them, okay, to influence them to do evil or to do the thing that God hate. That was his whole plan because he's fighting against God. To do the thing that God hate. And, and we are like, we're, we're participants on his team, like, just, you know, part of his, this is his, his force, okay, his military force, okay? And so and so now he's deceiving man to do evil, okay, because he knows we flesh and blood, and you know, ain't no good thing in the flesh. He knows that. And now not only does he have, you know, those all of those fallen angels with him, but now he has mankind. Now he has mankind. He's added to his arsenal. He has most soldiers, okay? And so God said he had to make uh Moses like a god to Pharaoh so that he can use most to execute judgment upon all the gods. Now, go real quick like uh, to Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. Exodus 4 and 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 1. It says this. And Moses answered said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken to my voice, for they will say, The Lord has not appeared to thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is it that thine hand. And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand that they may believe. Okay. The people that he sent them to, that they may believe that the Lord God, their fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put thine hand in thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous and uh, white like snow. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand back in the bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again to flesh just like his other hand. And it came to pass, if they would not believe thee, nor hearken to the voice of the first sound, sign, then they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it came to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, then thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So God gave Moses, you know, the power, authority like a God, okay? He was able to, you know, make that, you know, the rod turn to, 
a, 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 a snake, a serpent, and he was able to put his hand in, you know, as a sign. Uh, and the whole purpose of those signs is the same reason why God allowed, you know, Jesus and the apostles to do signs, the prophets to do signs, so they can believe on the word. It's always about the word. It ain't really about the signs and the wonder. God don't care nothing about signs and wonders. But God know how powerful the devil is, that the devil also can do signs and wonders, okay, to deceive people, you know, to, to, to make them believe a lie. And so in order for them to believe that the people that God is sending uh, to them to speak on his behalf, God knew he had to give them power over those devils, over those gods, more power than they had in order for the people to believe not so much on the signs and the wonders, but on the word that these men was going to be speaking on behalf of God. OK, now go to Ezekiel 7, Ezekiel 7, 8 through 12, Ezekiel 7, 8 through 12. 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 The power of the gods or angels working in and through men to deceive and control the world back then. This is what they were doing. Watch this now. Exodus, y'all know this word, but God's trying to give us a revelation and he's going to bring it home to us tonight real quick. Like, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, show, saying, show us a miracle unto you, then you shall say unto Aaron, take the rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded them. And Aaron cast uh, his rod before Pharaoh, and, his, and before his servant, it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise man and the sorcerers. Okay. That's Satan ministers, those wise men and sorcerers that called the devils in them. Now the musicians of Egypt, those are devils inside of these people. They also did in like manner with their enchantment or secret arts. But they cast down every man his rod and they became serpent. For real, a snake. But Aaron's rod, okay, God gave him power over those gods that was in those people. But Aaron's rod did what? Swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not unto him as the Lord had said. And the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He will refuse to let people go. Now, so God, that's the first uh, sign and wonder uh, God used to uh, give Moses power over those God that was in those people so that the people will believe on uh, uh, the word that God was, was sending to them, even Pharaoh. But God had already told them that Pharaoh's heart was going to be hardened because God wanted to use Pharaoh to be a witness to his power over the world, okay? Now go to Exodus chapter 7, verse 19. Exodus 7 and 19. Now go down to 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch it out upon the waters of Egypt, upon thy streams, upon the rivers, and upon the ponds, and all upon the pools of the water, that they may become blood, and that they may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, so the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of the serpent, and all the waters that was in the river turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river, and there was blood throughout the land of Egypt. Now listen to this now. And the musicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. Oh, secret arts, they turned the water to blood too. So they called, there were gods inside those people. It's real, okay? And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. Now go to Exodus chapter 8 and 5. Exodus 8 and 5. Exodus 8 and 5. Exodus 8 and 5. Exodus 8 and 5. As you were, Exodus, yeah, Exodus 8 and 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said to, and said to Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand upon thy rod upon the stream, over the river, and over the pond, and cause frogs to come by the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched over his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Now listen to this now. And the musician of the devil's children, the one those devils was in, did so with the enchantment, our secret art, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Now go to Exodus 8, 16, 16 through 19. Exodus 8, 16 through 19. And the Lord said to Moses, Say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lice and man and beast. And all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the musician did so with their enchantment to bring forth life. They tried, but what? They could not. They tried to make those lives, but they couldn't. So God has given Moses more power than those gods that's in those people because they tried to make life, but they could not. So there were lice upon man, upon beast. Then the musician said to Pharaoh, this is, they even had to acknowledge it. This is the finger 
of God. <laughs> That's the hand of God working through this thing. And Pharaoh's heart still was hard, for he harkened them as the Lord has said. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So you see, in order for uh, the people to believe, because you know God was going to use Moses, the first man really, that God literally was going to reveal uh, his truth to in the earth to mankind for the first time, okay? So God was going to use Moses, this man of God, okay? And he was going to see God face to face. He's going to hear God's voice. And God was going to give him the commandments, going to give him all these statutes and ordinances for his people. God was going to speak and reveal truth that came from him to the whole world beginning with Moses. But God knew that in order for the people to believe that what Moses is saying was from him, God knew that he had to give Moses more power than his fallen sons had. Because if he hadn't, they would have continued to do signs, wonders, and miracles uh, that was if stronger than Moses, and the people would have never believed Moses. They would have continued to believe the lie that the devil was using men to to send out in the earth, okay? To send out in the earth. So God gave Moses the power to execute judgment on the gods, to make them liars. And for the first time, since the devil deceived Eve in the garden, and now man know good and evil, finally, God has begun to try to save mankind and break mankind back to him. And the way we come back to him is through truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus is the truth that came from God, okay? Let God be true and every man a liar. It's all about truth, okay? And so now God has given Moses that kind of power for the people to believe in him. And now we don't even need to go about all the miracles that he did in the desert, okay? So that he can uh, convince the people, okay, that uh, the words that Moses was speaking wasn't Moses' word, they were God's word. So God had to execute his judgment uh, upon all of those gods that was in the in the desert that he was warring with so that the people can believe that the word that Moses was revealing to them was from God. Now, go to Zephaniah chapter 2, 1 verse. Zephaniah chapter 2, 1 verse, verse 11. Zephaniah chapter 2, 1 verse. And God did this from the beginning of him revealing his word through, through Moses, uh, through the prophets, through his son, and through the apostles, okay? So we have everything, if we have the truth that came from God from Genesis to Revelation, and God, I'm gonna show you through scripture that he confirmed it with signs, wonders, and miracles. He bind up, you know, uh, the gods in this earth and inside of people that deceiving people with lies, okay? Uh, putting these doctors of devils, okay? Deceiving people, calling them to sin against God. Uh, God executed judgment upon them because when, when the, the, the prophet was able to uh, disarm devils, okay, uh, through the power of God, you know, Jesus came, you know, <laughs> so you know what he did, and then Jesus gave that same power uh, to the apostles. Now, the important thing is this, signs and wonders ain't for believers, for unbelievers, folks, folks don't know God, we know God, okay, so the Bible say that we don't need to be looking for signs and wonders and miracles, no sir, not no more, okay, because if we want to see a sign, one in a miracle, all we got to do is open up the Bible and read it. I read the sign, one in a miracle. I don't need to see it. I don't need to experience it, okay? When I read it in the Bible, it was like I was there. I received it, okay? The Bible said, uh, uh, an adulterous generation seeketh after sign. And the reason why he said that is because now the word is in the earth. The truth is in the earth. And the truth from God through these men was confirmed through signs, wonders, and miracles. Through the sign, wonders, and miracles. God allowed these men to do uh, miracles that no natural man could possibly do. So they know that these men was from God. All right? And so that's already done. That's already over. All we have now and all we need now is the Holy Scripture, what we call the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. That's all we need. That's all we need to do. That's all we need to stand on. No sign, wonders, and miracles. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 11. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 11. The Lord will tear, the Lord will be terrible unto them. For he will what? Famish. Famish means starve. Starve. When you famish, you starve, you're hungry. 
for he will famish all the gods on the earth. Now, Zephaniah is prophesying what God is going to have to do in order to get the truth, okay? The truth, not just to the Old Testament saint, because they got part of the truth, but he had to finish the truth. He had to get the whole truth into the earth. And so, because he knew he was, Jesus was coming, he knew the apostle was coming. And so he said that what he had to, what he, what he was going to have to do, Zephaniah prophesied that he's going to famish or starve all the gods in the earth. That means all the gods all over the world. Okay. All the gods all over the world. And men, and once they do that, starve them, they hunger, they weep, they ain't got no power. Okay. And men shall worship him. <laughs> and once he do that, when he get his message out there, confirm it through signs and wonders, they're speaking for him, and then people are going to worship him. Uh, they're going to finally believe in him, or uh, believe in the truth, okay? Everyone from his place, no matter where you live, no matter where you live on these seven continents, okay? Even all the islands of the heathen, out of every nation, race, and culture, okay? He's going to famish every god so that he can get truth into the earth. Truth into the earth. Because the devil, since he deceived Eve and Adam, and they know the difference between, you know, right and wrong, good and evil. And he's inside of us now. He's inside of us. Okay. And we don't have power over him in and of ourselves. So if God had not done what he did by sending his son and, and letting the Holy Ghost come and live inside of us. Okay. Then we wouldn't, we couldn't be saved. We would never have power over the devil because he's a devil. Those are angels. We don't have any power over them. And their job is to continue to uh, deceive us, to make us believe in a lie, okay? To keep us sinning against God, to keep us choosing uh, 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 evil instead of good. And I know that's real because I experienced for almost 30 years. So God, through Zephaniah's prophesying, what he's going to do, he's going to famish every God that's all over the world, all these fallen names, all over the world, deceiving people inside of folks, okay? He's going to starve them. Now, New Testament in closing. Now, in order for the people to believe the word of the Lord through the apostle, the Lord had to basically do the same thing uh, that he did through Moses, okay, and the prophets, okay? He had to execute judgment upon them God. He had to give them power, you know, over the gods that's, that's in the earth that were deceiving people. Go to John chapter 14, verse 9. John chapter 14, verse 9. St. 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 John chapter 14, verse 9. And now God has called us from ignorance to repentance. Okay? Way back then he went before he got the word out uh, to the whole world. Okay? Truth out to the whole world. God was winking before God delivered a lot of stuff back in the Old Testament. Yeah, they in heaven. You know, they in heaven. Because God judged them based on how they responded to the right and wrong that was in them. Okay? All right? But we got the word. We got the whole word. So God has called us from ignorance to repentance. All right. Now we uh, we know the truth. And so now that we know the truth that come from God, if we choose not to do what the truth say do, the Holy Scripture say do, then just like the Bible say, the light is in the world. <laughs> the truth. OK. But men, women, girls and girls love darkness more than the light because they love doing evil. OK. So God, just like he say, he ain't condemning no, nobody. If anybody go to hell, it's because they choose to go to hell. Because the Bible said this is condemnation. The light is in the world, but men, women, boys, and girls love darkness because they love evil more than they love doing what's right. Okay? So God has disarmed principalities and power, the devil himself, and all those fallen angels, and given us power over them through truth. Through truth. Now, John 14 and 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how says thou then show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? It was having strong believing in Jesus. And Jesus telling you was from God. The words he said that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Jesus came to reveal God's word to us. And then he said, he is the one that does the work. Then Jesus said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Okay? Or else, or if you don't believe that, <laughs> or else believe me for what? The very work sake. All these signs, wonders, and miracles I'm doing. You know, ain't no man able to do the things that I'm doing, raise the gift, give sight to the blind, all of that. You know that God got to be working in me. 
But the whole purpose of those signs, wonders, and miracles for them to, to believe on the word that Jesus was bringing from God, the truth that Jesus had brought from the Father because of what the devil had did in the beginning, okay? Plant that lie in the hearts of mankind and deceiving mankind because now they know good and evil, now they got a choice, okay? And he know he's going to be in them to deceive them to always choose evil. And the only way you're going to be able to choose what's right and do what's right, just like the devil's in us making us do what's wrong in order for us to do what's right, even though we know what's right, God has to be in us, in us, okay? Because we ain't fighting against flesh and blood. We fighting against devils. That's why so many church people in the church right now, I mean, it's just shocking to me, you know, how they got the truth. You know, from the pulpit to the back door, but they're still doing so, so much evil, so much evil. OK, and I know why they're doing it, because what the Bible say, they love darkness more than they love the light. I mean, it's not because God can't give them the victory over it. It's because they love that thing more than they love God. They love doing wrong more than they uh, uh, love doing right. They would rather uh, enjoy sin for a season, whatever that sin is, sex, money, dope, alcohol. I don't know what it might be. OK, whatever the devil can use against you to sin against God, that's what he's going to keep before you. OK, but they love those things, you know, more than they love God. OK, that's the way it is. So Jesus said, if you don't believe, the, you, you know, if, if you don't believe me, then believe the signs, wonders and miracles that God is working through me. Go to Mark 16, 15, Mark 16, 15, Mark 16, 15, Mark 16, 15, Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, believers mean obey. Not just know it and hear it, but know it, hear it, and obey it. Okay? And these signs, now listen to what he's saying now. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Literally. In order to cast out a devil. Now devils are gods. Little God. They're God's son. they evil angels inside of folk. Okay, so in order to cast out devils, we got to have the same authority and power that God gave Moses. Okay, with God working in us. Okay, giving us power over those those gods that's inside of those people, casting them out. Okay, they should speak with new tongues. They should take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it should not hurt them. They should lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, He was seen up into heaven and set on the right hand of God, and they went forth now and preached everywhere. The Lord now, preach everywhere now, but look at what kind of power God had to give them for, for people to believe on the word so God can get truth to the earth, okay? The Lord working with them and confirming the word or proving that the word they were speaking was from him with what? Signs and wonders following, amen. Just like he did Moses, okay? Signs, wonders, and miracles. To disarm all those devils that's working signs and wonders in the people's lives and deceiving people. God gave, you know, has given us authority over them, power over them. Okay, it ain't us, it's God and Jesus, it's the spirit living inside of us. That's the kind of power he's given us. Okay, just like he's given uh, to Moses. Okay, if need be, if we go somewhere where people have never heard the gospel, the reason why, you know, we ain't operating the sign one as a miracle in America because this nation, I mean, the Bible has always been here. Okay, you know, God has used this nation basically to evangelize the whole world. So as far as God using us to one work sign one as a miracle, that's foolishness. The only thing he needs to use us to do is to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel, okay? Because everybody in America know the truth. Now, if God was to send us as missionaries to a, a foreign place where nobody had never uh, uh, heard the gospel before, uh, the same power that he gave the Old Testament saint, the same power that he gave the apostle, he would have to give to us, okay? Because we ain't just trying to deal with flesh and blood, we dealing with devils, Okay? And in order for them to believe that God is speaking through us to for them to receive the truth, if we went to a nation that, don't, that, that have never known about God, never known about Jesus, he would have to give us that kind of power, okay, to perform signs, wonders, and miracles, literally to, to have authority over those gods that's in whatever nation that is that's operating people, okay? And if he sent us, we would be doing the same thing that the, the Old Testament and New Testament saints are doing. We'll be performing signs, wonders, and miracles so God can get truth unto people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hebrew. I'll go real quick like Hebrews chapter two, verse one and four. Hebrews chapter two, verse one through four. Hebrews chapter two, verse one through four. Hebrews chapter two, verse one through four. 
I'm almost finished. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Therefore, this is what the Bible says, because the devil deceived Adam and Eve in the beginning and made them violate that one commandment not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and, and evil. <laughs> and he lied to them and they got deceived and they, they ate of it and the eye was open and now they like God. They know the difference between good and evil. All right. The only problem is that they ain't no angel, okay? I mean, even the angels, uh, uh, that's what happened to the devil. He knew good and evil, right and wrong, and even the angels, you know, uh, the, most of them didn't have power to do what's right. So you know if, if we know the, the, you know the difference between good and evil, that we're going to choose evil. If angels chose evil, <laughs> and they're angels, they spirits with power. And so the devil knew once he, I, I was open, we'd be like, God, we know good and evil that, when he get us out of us, we ain't going to have no power to do anything other than what he tell us to do, what he make us do. And the only way we're going to have the power and authority over him is we're going to have to give our life to Jesus Christ so that he can come live inside of us to give us power so that we can choose good. Hebrews 2 and 1. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to these things which we have heard. At least at any time, we should let them slip now. Okay, hold on. For if the word, listen to this now, it's always about the word. For if the word Spoken by angels was stood fast, okay? That's how Moses got the law. That's, you know, most of the law. That's how the apostles got the word, okay? Through angels. And every transgression of disobedience received a just recompense and reward. When the angels gave, brought the word from God to give to the apostles and, and Moses. Then he says this to us. How should we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? 